November 30th, 2012. This is the Quiet Bubble Podcast by Walter Bingens. Episode 17. I'll admit that this episode is sort of a freestyle, um, not rap, because I can't rhyme for shit, but it is an attempt to sort of let whatever is in my head come out, so I didn't write this one down first or even make any notes for it, it's just something I've been thinking about for a while, and that will be reflected in all the stammerings and the uhs and the sort of rambling nature of this, but I hope you enjoy it, or at least find it tolerable. Um, See you in two weeks. Thanks. So I've uh, I've been reading a lot of self-help books this year. It's it's been a rough year. Uh, Some of them have been recommended by my counselor. Some of them I've found through online sources. Some of them um, friends have recommended to me, but in any case... I've been arguing with a lot of them, debating with them, uh, having a difficult time, as I think you do with self-help books. Um, Several of the books that I've been flipping through, reading, setting aside, have been those specifically geared toward uh, the creative class. Uh, Writers, artists, musicians, whatever. Uh, I'm a writer, and I think people think that these things will appeal to me in some ways. And I've found that I really hate that word, creative, or at least I hate it when it's used as a noun. Creatives. I'm a creative. Um, Part of the thing that I hate about it so much is that it splits people into these camps of I'm a creative or I'm not a creative. Um, And of course, the people who think of themselves as creatives think of themselves in a very exalted way, and that's problematic for me. That's something that I've, as I've gotten older and as I've dealt with the last couple of years, I've come to really dislike and find find issues with. Um, I know of gardeners and farmers and postal workers uh, who all exhibit creativity. I think we all do. I think anytime we exhibit any sort of individual design upon an aspect of our lives, that we are expressing our creativity. You can see that in the particular way that someone paints their garage door or um, the way in which someone plants their garden and tends to it. Um, There's a co-worker at work who I think has one of the loveliest gardens, largest uh, vegetable and fruit gardens I've ever seen, and the changes within that that you see over time represents to me a really startling and powerful work of art, in part because it's a work of art that she doesn't get to control entirely. Uh, Nature runs its course and changes it. Um, This work friend tries to mold that garden as well as she can shape it. Um, Of course she does. She wants her butternut squash and her acorn squash and her cabbage and her green beans and her onions and whatnot. But there's a limit to that, and understanding and recognizing that limit is uh, part of the creativity itself, is part of her understanding of her work with that garden uh, and how it plays itself out upon the world. Um, And so I get really, really increasingly uh, irritated by so-called artists, uh, or they call themselves creatives, if you read enough of these books, um, who sort of distinguish themselves from people who don't necessarily make a living by their art, uh, but who are nevertheless expressing it and using it to brighten not only their worlds, but the worlds of those around them. Where am I going with this, exactly? Um, I guess part of the issue is that 
creatives calling yourself a creative and I've done it and I've been sort of doing it for a long time and I'm trying to get past it calling yourself a creative uh, in some ways ennobles you beyond all measure I mean there's this ongoing myth that the creative the creative person is a person who is extremely sensitive to the world around them more sensitive uh, to the world around them than those who aren't artistic. And I've found that that's just a load of you know, bullshit, frankly. Uh, that, in fact, creative people, people who make a living through their creative pursuits or try to, uh, and I'm one of them, I'm just as guilty of this as anyone, have a tendency to be extremely articulate about their own sensitivities. Uh, they can really explain in detail through their chosen art form or even talking about their chosen art form uh, the depths of their feelings and emotions. They're very febrile, thin-skinned, sensitive to the world around them. But that doesn't necessarily mean they extend that sensitivity to any other person in the world or any other community. And in fact, there's this sort of mythical idea that the artist has to be set apart from the community in order to create good art. That as a creative, you are more special uh, than uh, your mail carrier or your hotel management clerk or your car mechanic. Uh, that you have a heightened sensitivity. No, it's, it's, it's crap. It just means that you have you express your sensitivity toward the world through your art. It doesn't necessarily mean you're any more sensitive uh, than anyone else. It doesn't necessarily heighten your perceptions of the world or have a sense that you are better uh, than anyone else. It's simply that you express it through your writing or your music or your architecture or your dance or your acting or your stand-up or whatever it is you do. Uh, so, creatives. I, it's a word that I've come to dislike as a noun. As an adjective, it's fine. I think we all are creative people in our own ways and that we all manifest our designs upon the world in outsized ways or little ways. Uh, from the kid who creates an entire city out of Lego for the hell of it, or to the woman who paints her garage door monthly, such as Carolyn Norris, a uh, Delta-based artist in Cleveland, Mississippi, who paints her door uh, with scenes from the neighborhood uh, every month or so. Uh, she doesn't make a living through that. I'm not sure she's made any money from that at all, by the way. Uh, but it does enrich her life, and more importantly, it, en it enriches the lives of those around her. Is she somehow a less of a creative person than the punk rock singer who does it full time? I don't think so. And I think trying to make that distinction, making a distinction between the art and the world, is not only um, snobbish, but also problematic and dangerous. We all exist in nature, we all exist in a network of people, of places, of uh, animals. We are, we exist in a world. We've always existed in the world. Even when we were in the womb, we were encased in a womb inside somebody else, that someone else who was living a life and had a, uh, a network of connections for herself. We've always been a part of something else. And by saying that we are creatives um, and forging a split between us. It's as damaging as the sort of mind-body split that so many people, uh, especially religious sorts, seem to adhere to. This idea that you can't uh, be an intellectual but like baseball, which would be news to dozens of writers uh, who've written about that sport from Updike to Marianne Moore. Uh, this, this sort of duality that doesn't actually exist between the creative spark 
in the rest of the world. And the more we encourage that through self-help books, through art therapy, uh, through this idea of narcissistic creativity that stands apart from the world, the worse we are. So don't use it. Don't use it as a noun. Don't call yourself a creative. You are a creative person. Each and every one of you. Whoever you are. Wherever you are. Always.